the basics of med planning. Got it. I will, uh, I'll restart. Hello everyone. Uh, my name is James Gruber. I'm an event manager with event and conference services, also referred to as ECS. And we're just going to go over the planning process, what we do, and some ins and outs of planning events for this semester. Josh, do you want to introduce yourself next? Sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Josh Mioli. I am also an event manager with ECS, um, and we'll be working with you hopefully this semester. Thank you. And I'm Elizabeth Strauch. I'm a senior event manager. Um, the three of us primarily work with student organizations. Um, so we'll be your primary contacts as far as planning your events here on campus. All right. So yeah, we'll just uh, quickly go over who we are. Uh, so event conference services, we plan and execute all events that take place on Towson University's campus. So from start to finish, you'll work with one of us uh, with your event and we'll guide you and answer any questions you have, as well as ask questions that you may not have thought of. Um, and then, yeah, you already met our team. We, again, focus primarily on student org events. And in our reservations team, we have Heather Sorensen, who's also here. Uh, she can see I heard a little fun picture. And then we also work with our setup and operations teams for any kind of setup that you need, as well as student staffing and our tech ops team who will help you get any presentations up, any type of audio equipment, visual equipment uh, that you might need for your event. And we can go from simple presentations to complex events and we'll be there to guide you through the process. All right, so getting into what we do, we'll first off plan with you. Our goal is not to plan for you. We wanna meet with you, ask you questions, see what you want from the event. We'll provide event support, set up again with our setup team, AV tech with our tech ops team, staffing through operations. Anything that you might need for your event, we are here to facilitate that and make sure that you have everything that you'll need to have your event running smoothly. And before I go any further, if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat. We'll be monitoring that. And we'll go through questions that aren't maybe urgent at the end, because uh, we, we should have plenty of time. And then continuing with the slide, uh, the day of event support uh, for your major events, we will be on site if you need us to be, or if we deem it appropriate for us to be on site be able to kind of facilitate any quick fixes, any on the spot fixes, we'll be able to make sure that everyone's in the loop and questions and issues are handled promptly. I think this is a good point. Um, before we get too far into our presentation, we do just want to kind of gauge from you all who are here, just to make sure that we're going over and providing you with the best information possible. So we have a couple quick questions we'd like for you to answer. First up, question number one, have you previously planned any events um, with ECS? If you don't mind, just a quick yes or no. All right, answers are coming in. So it looks like we're a little bit split, but um, it looks like mostly, I'm gonna end it and we can share the results. It looks like most of you have not um, previously planned. So welcome, and this is a great starting point for you heading into the semester. Um, all right, let's see, question number two we have for you. Um, how comfortable are you planning events um, and with the event planning process here at TU? Um, so I know a lot of us are pretty new at it, um, so it's probably going to be a lot more first timers are fairly comfortable, but just getting a sense of where everyone is. Okay, give it a couple more seconds. Any last answers? All right, let's end that one. And then so it looks like it's a lot of first timers here, so that's good to know. And then last question real quick for you. Um, maybe, oops. 
sorry, let me get that one going. We just want to know a little bit more about what you would like to learn about here today. Um, so we can talk more about the reservations process, the planning process, setup and tech, crowd management, um, food and beverage, waivers, liability and contracts, outdoor events, as well as event expenses. Um, oh goodness, okay. You can pick multiple answers. Okay. That kind of gives us a good idea. Looks like we're kind of all over the board here, a little bit going all through ECS. So the reservations process looks to have a little bit more, as well as uh, waivers, liabilities, and contracts. Um, and we'll touch on all of these topics, but this will at least help us maybe dive a little deeper um, into some of those for you. So thank you all for playing along. <laughs> um, and as James said, if you have any specific questions as we're going through the presentation, please feel free to drop them in the chat and we will address them um, either while we're going through or um, at the end. So, all right, next up, Josh, go for it. Cool. All right, so we'll uh, talk about the planning process, um, just kind of overall process, and then we can go into the different parts uh, a little more specific. So. Looking at it um, from start to finish, we want to talk about our timeline, um, the things to consider. Um, so those would be your location, setup, um, AV tech, and then actual uh, management of the event. So your crowd management and execution during the event. Um, Liz, can we get to the next slide? Thank you. Oh, so starting, Liz, is this me or you? You can go for it if you want. Okay. Um, so starting off the process, we want to um, get your uh, event on the book. So you're going to put in your reservation requests. Um, so looking at the timeline, or I guess we should start. All reservations go through 25 Live. Um, that is words. Um, sorry. All reservation requests must be submitted through 25 Live um, from uh, one of the two approved organization requesters. So those are the people who did the Blackboard training from your organization. All requests should be from them. And then they need they will be recertified on July 1st. So just keep that timeline in your head as you go forward. Okay, so submission timeline. Um, we want to shoot for these dates so that we can accommodate all of your needs for your event. So starting off, you want to try and get your large event in 21 days or more before your event. That would be your outdoor events, fashion shows, any performance-based events, um, and then walks or runs. Um, and that's because these events need more setup, need more um, staffing, all of these different factors. Um, we want to make sure that we can check them off our list and get them done for you. So we need 21 days. And then your medium um, to small sized events, we want 14 days in advance at least. Um, so these would be your smaller events, your meetings, um, and then along with anything that would need a um, tech support, so your audio, visual, um, or staffing, catering, and or rentals. And then from there, 13 days to 72 hours. Um, that could be any event, um, but it would be as is most likely. So you would get the space um, and anything in the space that lives in the space, but nothing more. If you need any help um, with the reservation process, you can reach out to our reservations team. Um, the best way to reach out to them would be through their email, uh, which is there, and then we'll provide it later on. And then one thing to note, if you're having troubles finding a space um, you don't know what space you want to be in. Um, you can always look um, when you're selecting the location, click find me a space, and then we can help you find a space that would fit your event needs. And that find me a space is going to be the location that you would select when filling out your re request form. Um, so when you go to locations, it'll give you the option of either a drop down or you can even like type something in. So right there is where you could type in find me a space and that will essentially just send it right over to our reservations team so that they can assist you with that process. 
Um, one other thing to just mention is keep in mind that a location has to be attached to your reservation for it to go anywhere. Um, so if you go in and you start the process of putting in a form, um, but maybe you got sidetracked and forgot to click which room you wanted, um, or you went back and changed something and the room got taken off, that kind of just leaves it out there in 25 live land and no one can really see it. Um, so in order to get it sent to a, um, a 25 live approver, um, you would need to have that location attached. The other note I would just mention is if you're requesting classrooms, um, make sure you're trying your best to request them in advance. Um, ECS doesn't always necessarily see those right away. We do, it goes to a specific building approver. Um, so just keep that in mind as well. Um, but if you ever have any questions, feel free to reach out. We're happy to help you. So we already talked about the timeline a little bit, um, and this is going a little bit further into it and some visuals. So three to four weeks, um, as you're putting your reservations in and they're getting approved, you're gonna be assigned an event manager. That would be one of the three of us on this meeting right now. Um, so we want to, depending on your event, um, start communicating. Um, so that could be through email, uh, give us a call, stop by or set up a meeting um, based off of what you think your event will need. Um, and we will also try and reach out to you at some point. But um, if you have questions or if you need anything, or if you just wanna start planning sooner, feel free to reach out to us. We always like to see that. Um, and then at least 14 days from your event, we want to start confirming all of those details. So the tech, the setup, um, staffing, whatever it is, uh, we want to be close to finalizing that or finalizing that 14 days out. And then seven to three days. This is when we need to finalize everything. Um, if you need any changes, we want to make those in this time period um, and go from there. And then 48 hours, two days um, out, if you're going to cancel your event, regardless of what reason, if it's weather or if you want to push it back, um, we need to do that at least 48 hours. And then day of the event, that's when we set up everything for you and then you come in, you decorate, um, and then you execute your event and have fun. Great. And also feel free, like if you're ready to start talking about your event for April or May now, please come and see us. We're happy to start working with you. If you'd like any like price estimates or you're not sure what your event might cost in a space that you're going to be in, um, we're happy to kind of work with you to figure out what may work best with your budget. Um, so we can always provide some quotes well in advance. Um, our office, by the way, is down in um, the union. We're in... 16147, um, which we're kind of wedged between the used store and the post office. So feel free to come in and see us if you have any questions or send us any emails. Other things that I guess kind of go into planning your event um, and things that you're going to want to consider um, once you're as you're going through that timeline is going to be. Um, Food and beverage, are you gonna be serving food at your event? Um, should you be serving food? Do you need a food waiver? Are you getting it th your food through Tiger Hospitality? Um, as well as like, if you're gonna need tables for that food to be placed on, that's something to consider. And sometimes, especially with like outdoor events, I see that kind of gets forgotten sometimes. Um, so kind of talking through food and beverage and what all, that is gonna look like and what's gonna be required for that. Um, you're also gonna to wanna to consider some entertainment contracts. Um, if you have any entertainer, whether that be a DJ, a band, you have a caricature artist, you have a face painter coming, they're gonna to need to fill out a contract with the university. Um, that contract does two things. It stipulates how much money if any, is going to be exchanged between that vendor and your organization, which is the university at a, on a smaller scale, um, as well as it's kind of a liability. Um, and it takes care of, um, in the event, 
your DJ came and there was water dripping on his speaker, he now can't sue you for that speaker cost. Um, to give you an example of kind of the liability piece there. So anytime you have someone that you're either paying or a vendor who's coming in, you're going to want them to complete that entertainment contract, which you can complete um, on involved to you. Um, and it will need to be, it sh the contract should not be signed by you as a student. The contract needs to be signed by a professional staff member in the student activities office. Um, so just want to be perfectly clear about that. Other things you might want to consider that um, your event managers will be able to assist you with would be if you need to complete a liability waiver, if you're having any type of um, physical activity where someone can maybe get hurt, it might be a good idea for a liability waiver to be filled out. Once again, it's protecting you as an organization um, and kind of just making sure that everyone understands the risk that they're partaking in. Um, depending on where your event is um, or what is happening, you may need to um, hire additional housekeeping. That's something your event manager will be able to assist you with as well. Um, as well as something you want to think about is parking. So if you have guests that are coming from off campus or you have a vendor coming, um, someone coming to drop off some food for the event, you're going to want to think about where they're going to park and if any permits are going to be needed for that. Um, so that's the, these are all some of the things that we can um, help you with and walk you through the process as event managers. Oops. All right. Josh, did you want to do crowd management? Yeah. We'll let all the words yeah. pop up. All right. So um, once the planning process is done, it's time to execute your event. And the biggest thing, one of the biggest things we want to think about is crowd management during your event. So um, what is your event going to look like? How are you going to manage the attendees? Um, and make sure that the entire event runs smoothly and uh, hopefully without any hiccups. So a few things you want to think about um, when working through this, and we can always help with this, is arrival. So where is your check-in and welcome table? Um, are you doing online registration, ticketing, wristbanding? So as your guests, as your uh, members, attendees are arriving, um, what is the first thing they're going to do when they get there, and how are you managing that? Um, this also helps you with a few things. You can track attendance um, to look back and see how many people came to your event. Um, did more people, did less people come? That's always a good thing. But you're also um, making sure you know who's at your event and um, um, how are they um, accounted for while they're at your event. Um, the next thing is event flow. So this is the actual setup of your event. Where's the entrance? Where are the exit points? Are you allowing re-entry? Um, so can people leave and come back? And where are lines going to be placed within your event? So if you have a bunch of activities, where are people standing waiting to do those activities? Um, if there's a line to get into your event, where is that line going? And then placement of activities. So what are some other forms of crowd management? Can anyone think of some? You can throw it in the chat, unmute yourself and say it if you want. Anyone? Okay. Well, some that you might want to consider. Um, we said risk standing, um, ticketing. Those are some good things. You could also do clickers. Um, head counting. We want to make sure that the event is safe and the crowd is managed. Did I miss anything? That was well done. Oh, a barcode. That was a good suggestion. Oh. All right. Outdoor events. <laughs> These um, obviously become very fun and exciting when we get with the warmer weather towards the end of the semester. Um, as far as outdoor events go, in the fall, we launched um, some new guidelines that are to be used um, when planning your events. 
Um, so there is their own sort of set of rules, which we'll get into on the next slide. But one of the big things you want to consider is that there, you, if you're having an outdoor event, you need to give us at least 14 days notice. Um, and a lot of that has to do with when we're doing those outdoor events, they often require additional staffing. They're going to require um, potentially some rentals. They're going to require an advisor sometimes to be on site. Um, so we want to make sure we're giving everyone plenty of notice when it comes to um, these outdoor events. So 14 days is the minimum you could request that. Um, all events are limited to four hours when it comes to outdoor events. In addition, we will provide you with one hour to set up and one hour to break down. Um, so as you're starting to submit some of those um, requests, just keep in mind it will be limited to four hours. So request appropriately, please. <laughs> um, if you are planning to have any form of amplified sound, so there's going to be a speaker, there's going to be a DJ, um, there's going to be amplified sound. It's going to require a sound monitor to be present. There is a cost for a sound monitor. It is $18 an hour for a minimum of three hours. Um, so just something to factor in when you're doing your event budget. Um, we will require sound monitors for outdoor events with amplified sound. Um, and then when it comes to outdoor events, there's really going to be two categories. It's going to be a high risk and a low risk category. So our next slide goes into those details a little bit more. Um, the general overview is going to come down to lower risk events are going to be those events that don't have any external guests. So it's going to be attendees who are TU students, faculty, or staff. Um, so that's going to put you into a lower risk, which oftentimes um, will not require much additional like staffing or anything. Um, a higher risk event is going to be when we have um, events with some external guests. Um, so depending from there, some of the factors in determining what guidelines we have to follow um, really depend on the timing of the event. Is it ending before or after 5 p.m.? Um, and how many people are you thinking are gonna come? Are there only gonna be 50 people or are there gonna be 500 people? Um, so kind of gauging in attendance, I know that's oftentimes tricky, um, but we kind of do our best and it's always kind of good to go off of uh, what like historically we've had come out. Um, that kind of will give us a good basis um, of what we could anticipate potentially for this year's event. Um, so just that's kind of the general overview um, to give you a quick rundown of outdoor events. If you have any like specific questions or you want to discuss what you're thinking about doing, please feel free to come see us um, or send us an email and we're happy to walk you through some of that. All right, Josh's favorite part. <laughs> Getting now it's time to execute and have fun at your event. Oops, sorry. Oh, whoops. Yeah, so executing your event and I guess that's kind of just the final step. Go ahead, Josh. All right, um, so we have some tools at our disposal that can help you and help us um, plan and execute your event. Um, some of you might be familiar with some of these. Um, the biggest one is gonna be a BEO form. So that stands for Banquet Event Order. And this is really where we outline all of your event details um, and then um, any of the extra things that you might need. And then this gets communicated to all of our campus partners as well as you. Um, so everyone is in the same loop on what your specific event um, needs. So when you put your reservation in and when we start communicating with you, um, at some point you will see this form um, and you'll read through it and we'll make sure that what you're seeing is what you need and we'll pass it along to everyone else. The other thing is uh, for those that are visual learners or need some sort of picture, we can do floor plans. Um, so this would outline what, how your event would be set up, um, the tables, the chairs, anything, stages, 
whatever you need for your event, we can put in one of these floor plans so that you can see how it would be in each space. Um, and then going back to the crowd management, we can also identify entrances, exits, all of that, um, just to make sure that your entire event looks and feels how you want it to feel. And then some ECS updates. Um, so coming soon, uh, we're gonna have an updated student guide for planning events. Um, this will be on the ECS webpage, uh, which is on the Towson University website. Um, and this kind of outlines everything we talked about today, as well as goes into um, more details on some of those, um, those parts of the planning process. Um, so that'll be for you to use, for you to reference whenever you need it. Um, and you can find that on the webpage as well as uh, we are hoping to start a virtual space um, where anyone with questions about planning events, about events in general, whatever it is, um, we'll have a link um, ready on the ECS webpage and you can log in and talk to one of the event managers, no matter what it is. Um, so more details about that, dates, times, and the links will be available on the ECS page as well. Uh, coming soon. Thanks, Josh. And that sort of brings us to the end of our presentation. Um, I know we kind of just did a very brief overview of a lot of topics, but if there's anything specific, please feel free to drop that in the chat. I know we have a little bit longer left of our session, so this can kind of be our Q&A portion. Um, I have seen a couple of questions coming in about 25 Live and how to um, make reservations for rooms. So let me see if I can pull this up over here. Um, this is gonna be 25 Live. Um, yours may look a little bit different than mine, but um, you should be able to have a very similar um, setup. Um, and there should be a big create an event button in the middle of the page. Um, it's big and blue um, with the little paper and pencil on it. Um, so you can just, in order to put in a event, you would just click that button. Um, and my form's gonna look slightly different than yours, but overall it's gonna ask you for some basic event information. What's the name of your event? Um, what type of event are you having? So yours will probably be either a student or event meeting or outdoor event. Um, it'll ask you how many people you're expecting. Um, we would ask that you give us a little bit of a description um, just so we can kind of understand what event is taking place as well as um, like what room may work best for you or space may work best. Um, next, you're going to go into the date and time section where you're just going to tell us um, when you would like to have your event, and then the start time and end time. Um, you can also add additional time to your events, I believe, which would be pre-event time. Pre-event time is going to be that time that you're allowed to be in the room. Um, and that would be for setup or breakdown after the event. So maybe you need to get in an hour early so your DJ can help you set up or, um, you're going to need, you know, you're going to need an hour to clean up after. Um, so feel free to add some additional time. There is an option to do a repeating pattern. So this is great if you're doing like a weekly or monthly meeting. Um, you just click the repeating patterns and then you can say if you would like it to be daily, weekly, or monthly. There's also this option called ad hoc. Um, what that means is you would like to have a reoccurring meeting, but it may not be a consistent pattern necessarily. So maybe this week you wanted to meet on Mondays, but then next week it might be a Tuesday. Um, so you can select ad hoc. And then what that does is it then allows you to go in and select. You would just click on the dates that you would like to add in addition to that first one. Um, but next is going to be that location section. The location section um, is where you're going to either enter the room you would like to be in, um, or this is where you would hit that find me a space. Um, 
So, and then you just hit request and it'll add it onto your reservation. This is also um, where you will find information for, or where you would find reserving a tabling option. So if you wanted to do tabling in the union, you would just go ahead and type in, the best way to do it is UU tab. Um, and then all of the options of union tabling will show up for you um, that you could look to request. And it'll let you know right then and there where you can like do the bake sales or if you're not allowed to sell and you can just promote information. Um, so then after that section, sorry, this is where it's a little different. I believe you come down to a comments um, and that's where you can add any information. So maybe you selected find me a space. Um, but you really are looking for it to be in a ballroom. So you would want to write in there, I'd really like to be in at least one ballroom, or I'd really like to be in a classroom that has uh, like a lecture hall or something. Um, so any information you think that could be helpful to our team in placing your event appropriately, that's a great place to enter all of that information. From there, you just click save and it will send your event over to our reservations team. Um, so I hope that kind of answers that question. Um, when you are in 25 Live, you can always search your organization's name um, and that can pull up an option for you to see all of your events that you have coming up. If, you're, if you can't remember if you've submitted something or you just wanna go back and look at that, you can do that as well. Um, all right, let's see a couple of these other questions. Can you get help for events like fundraising and online events that do not need us to use 25 Live? Um, we could try to help you um, depending on, the question was um, if we could assist with events that would take place online. Um, so if you want to swing by and talk to us, we'd be happy to give you some best advice or things we've seen that have worked well. Um, we probably wouldn't get too into the details with you as far as like floor plans or anything. I guess if it's an online event, you wouldn't need a floor plan, but, um, we probably wouldn't get too, too much involved in the event, but swing by and let us know and we're happy to help. <laughs> Um, how many times can you repeat the pattern? Is there a limit on the number of reoccurring meetings before we have to redo the reservation? I don't believe that there is a limit on a repeating pattern or a reoccurring meeting. What I would say is that we do encourage you only to submit a reoccurring meeting for the upcoming semester. So, um, Right now, like with it being the spring semester, we would only be accepting spring 24 reoccurring events. Um, our books will open up in April um, to look at the following academic year. So keep an eye out on your email. Um, I'm sure you'll be getting emails from student activities as well as our reservations team leading up to that just to let you know that when the books will open for people to request. What you're gonna be allowed to request is um, for the fall, for fall 24 in April, starting in April, <laughs> you can request one fall weekly meeting, one event for the fall and one event for spring 25. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna help us start building that calendar out um, and kind of giving everyone an opportunity to put in an event for that academic year. Then as we get into, as we get closer to the fall semester, we'll open the books for additional fall requests. And then I believe probably sometime October, November is when we'll be looking to open the books for additional spring 25 requests. So I hope that kind of helps gives you a picture of timelines. Um, if we have fundraising that like a bake sale, what would the guidelines around food for that be, especially concerning homemade goods like cookies and muffins? Um, great question. So bake sales are really what we encourage. We encourage baked goods to be sold um, where you are, just like you said, doing 
cookies, muffins, um, cupcakes, those are all good to go. Um, we, you're going to want to be really cautious about any food that's going to have to remain hot or cold. Um, that's going to get into a little bit of a stickier situation just because we do want to be maintaining um, all the appropriate like temperatures so that there's um, no one were, would get sick or there'd be any like health code violations. Um, but I would say bake sales are good to go. Cookies, cupcakes, brownies, muffins. That's the best option. Any other questions? I've seen a couple come in, but I think I've hit on all of them. Um, one thing we didn't talk about is this is one of the benefits of coming to this session. So um, ECS actually looks to offer um, students a reward. Um, we send out surveys after all of your events. Um, and each month we actually pick a winner of the people who completed the survey and give their group $50 towards a future event. So if anyone maybe doesn't have a huge budget that they're working with, um, or is someone just looking at, oh, it's always nice to have a little extra money. Um, make sure you keep an eye out for those surveys and fill them out. Um, we will, we contact the winner once a month um, just to let them know that they won $50 for their organization to use for an event in the upcoming like academic year. So you essentially have a full year um, to use that winning. So I feel like a lot of people don't take advantage of that. So fill out the survey. I think it's pretty quick. Um, let us know what we do well or what we can do better to um, help make things better and easier for all of you. Um, there was not a sign in form for this session. Um, I think that there is a form that you fill out after this session when you go back to the main session. Um, are there any forms that you will have to fill out before selling homemade goods? Yes. So if you are selling baked goods, you're going to want, um, to make sure that you're just reserving a table, um, but there's no form that you would necessarily need to fill out regarding the food specifically. I hope that answers the question. Um, what was my other item? Josh, James, any other tidbits? Favorite things you recommend? Um. Liz, did you want to briefly touch on uh, handling money during bake sales and whatnot? Sure. Um, what would you like me to touch on? Uh, yeah, just specifically going over how to handle the, the money that we recommend. Oh. Okay, yeah. Um, so definitely, I would say we nowadays especially recommend like virtual sales um or digital sales um so that way there's no like cash transactions happening um obviously running or having like collecting a large sum of cash is obviously like a little bit of a safety risk um so we would encourage it to be more of like a digital sales but you're also going to want to make sure that's going back towards like an organization account and not like necessarily a singular person account um, because you're going to want to make sure that there's like a money trail. Um, but yeah, so if you have more questions about that, feel free to ask. But we would say we don't recommend collecting money on site. Um, if you are going to be collecting large sums of money, like um there's a large charity event that happens where sometimes people do bring a few hundred dollars of cash donations. Um, if we're expecting something like that, we would require TUPD to be on site just to um, assist with, um, just to ensure like the safety and security of that money. 
Um, we wouldn't want anyone to be put at risk with large sums of cash. Other questions? Um, we talked about when additional requests can be submitted. Um, I guess, what types of events are people looking to host this semester? Maybe get some of that going on in the chat. Them. I'm looking forward to some outdoor events. Mixers, okay. Or mixers events with DJs, panels, okay. Oh, wow. It looks like we got lots going on. I hope all of these request forms are filled out. <laughs> But yeah, I think that's the biggest takeaway is make sure that you are um, getting those forms in as soon as possible. I feel like every year, especially as we get towards May, April and May, um, all of those like end of the semester events start popping up and space becomes very hard to find. Um, I would also say if you realize, you know what, I'm not going to use space this day, like we're going to go do something off campus or we're going to collab with another group. So we're not going to use our reservation. Please let your event manager or reservations know, um, as I'm sure you all are well, are all are well aware, um, space is at a premium around here. So if you're not going to use a space, please release it. Um, just so that another group may have an opportunity um, to host their event. So that's always like a good best practice, um, especially if you are a group that's in a classroom. Um, we would encourage you to let us know when it's not happening. Um, another topic would be if you are having any like guest speakers come in to your events or to be on any of your panels, um, if you just want to like let the give your event manager an idea of like who may be coming, um, we always just like to have a gauge of are you bringing alumni back? Are you bringing um, potentially a controversial speaker? Um, just that so that awareness of who's going to be on campus is always beneficial and helpful. Um, so please keep that in mind. Um, if you are having anyone outside come or come back to campus, um, that's always helpful to know. Um, I had one other thought that I lost. Billing. We didn't talk too, too much about billing or expenses for your event. Um, so when it comes to ECS, um, as a student organization, you have the ability to use um, the majority of classrooms, conference rooms, ballrooms, um, free of charge. Um, so there's not going to be an expense for like the basic tables and chairs within those spaces. Um, where there's going to look to be some Fees are going to primarily be if you're using tech in the Union or West Village um, or outdoors. Um, if you are needing to rent a stage, um, if you'd like pipe and drape, which is like the black curtain we typically put up behind a stage, um, as well as if you're going to have any staffing, that's going to cost money. Um, what else am I missing? If there's any external rentals you're gonna do, those are gonna be your primary sources of costs and expenses to organize to your organization. Um, we are happy to work with you to get you a price estimate. Um, you're not locked into that. We can always look to make changes. Um, I know a lot of groups do tend to do like more like presentation like events. Um, those can sometimes work really well in classrooms. 
um, classrooms you can look to utilize. You will still require a reservation through 25 Live, um, but the technology in those classrooms is free for the most part. So that um, is always a good option. I would though really stress um, the academic buildings are very kind in letting us use those spaces. Um, so we wanna make sure that we are being really good stewards of those spaces and that we are, um, sorry, I lost my train of thought. We are conducting ourselves in an appropriate classroom manner. Oftentimes during our events that are taking place in classrooms, there could be a class or meeting happening next door or down the hall. So we just always wanna make sure we're aware of what else is around us um, and we're, the furniture shouldn't be moving. Um, if we're using a classroom, it should be kind of similar to going to class where it's mostly like a presentation. It's a business-like meeting. Um, there shouldn't be any like yelling or anything like performance-based happening in a classroom. Um, just to give you guys kind of that rule of thumb. Um, over the years, we have had a few instances where um, there have been some incidences that have um, impacted what has been made available in the future. So just something to keep in mind, and we would ask that you help us um, to maintain those spaces for groups. Um, how to book a theater for movie night. So if you'd like to book, um, I'm assuming you're talking about the theater in the Union. Um, it's gonna be Union 324. Um, is the room number. You can absolutely look to do that. Um, there is a cost for the technology in that space. Um, and if you're doing a movie night, you're going to want to make sure that you have appropriately um, like gained the rights to show that movie if it's not like a personal created movie. That makes sense. Um, but yes, our theater in the union is going to be room 324. That was something I forgot to mention. When you're searching rooms in 25 Live, you're going to want to always start um, your building with the building, which is going to be a two letter code. So the union is UU, West Village is WC. Um, and then that's going to be followed by a four digit number. So in the union, if you're looking to do the theater, it would be UU space 0324. Um, the union ballrooms would be 0302. Um, so I know that sometimes happens, like I'll only type in three of the numbers and I won't type in that first zero. So that's like a little tip as to help you find the rooms you're looking for in 25 Live. All right, well, I think we've almost reached our time limit. Um, so if you have anything else, please feel free to reach out to us. Like I said, we're located here in the first floor of the union. Um, and we are here usually Monday through Friday, 830 to 5. So feel free to stop by, introduce yourselves, and we look forward to working with you all throughout the semester. Have a great rest of your day.